Hello and welcome back to another cast here on my YouTube channel. This is going to be Xiaoxia, the Chinese player, one of the best players um, outside of Korea, versus Scan. I'm sure if you watch Artosis' stream or even a little bit of ASL, you're familiar with Scan. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, uh, and leave a comment. That helps me get this content out there. Uh, I think we're at like 27k subscribers, so we're steadily growing, but... Uh, it is a grind, so it's appreciated if you can support me with that. Also, see this micro macro shirt? You probably can't read Korean, but that's what it says. Uh, you can get it at tastestreads.com. Um, so definitely check it out. That's my merch site. Um, in this game, we have Scan here in the top right. We've got Xiaoxia over here in the top left. And... Um, you know, Scan, uh, we already got to cast a couple of his games here on my channel. He's uh, had some pretty solid TVZ. Um, I would say he's probably the favorite here. But at this point in time, Xiaoxia is like grinding it out versus 2,500, 2,400 players and ASL players. So it's like he's actually really good. By the way, it's going to be early barracks here. This is the dreaded barracks on eight. This has been somewhat popular this year in ASL in general. Um, it is one where, you know, the stakes go get, get pretty high right away. Hold on. Wait, what? Oh, I thought he was going to make a second barracks. I was like, wait, no, that's not a thing. Okay, so he makes the depot here. So the idea is you can make some Marines, put some pressure, maybe even do a bunker rush. And then um, from there you can uh, just kind of lift the barracks off and go back. Oh, I didn't even realize I was still on camera. Excuse me, guys. The last thing you'd want to do is look at me the entire time I cast a game where I'm hunched over, squinting, probably picking my nose. So he's going to start to make Marines. One SCV to scout in each direction. And look, I mean, this could actually be pretty bad for our Zerg player because he did go for hatchery first. This is the closest area uh, to get to with the barracks. So, like, I'm a little bit worried. I've seen some games where they make the bunker a little bit further out and then try to make another bunker. You kind of try to change them to uh, chain them together. And I don't know that Zerg even sees this. He literally has no idea what's happening right now. Oh, God. And, I mean, he's going to spot this, but he can't stop the SCV from finishing this, right? Yeah. Oh, dude, is this just going to end? Another. So there's two Marines in the bunker. I mean, this is crazy. He already gets... Oh, he gets two drones. There's only five drones out on the map. I got to give a, a, a vision of everybody. I almost turned all the vision off. Now he's got two Marines back here, but this this uh, drone is injured. He's going to get that one. Oh, my God. He gets another one. Now he's going to get this one over here. And he's going to get that one, too. And he's running away. And the Marines are not going to stop being made. Now that the hatchery is done, the bunker, you need to get one more bunker made over here if this is going to work. It seems like Scan was maybe a little bit too preoccupied. And this is, this is actually some big brain play here. He realizes it's going to be an overextension if he tries to attack out further. So he just goes back and builds out his wallet. He knows it's going to be a lot of work for those Marines, uh, those Lings, to kill that off. More drones are being made, but we're going to see a command center in a second here, planted right down here. So Scan has done, like, a really good job, just to start this off. Xiaoxia might be tempted to do some kind of cheese. Because it's going to be a pretty uphill fight if he's going to try to um, fully recover. This is a kind of a smart move. I almost forgot you can do this on this map because I got so caught up, um, you know, when, when that initial attack... Uh, came so he's got a hatchery down here this is like yeah I mean, it's, it's like almost like i forgot what map we were on for a second he can actually expand over here now keep in mind you can put marines here and actually hit the drones from there but this is probably the safest way to play 
to just get a third base that's a little bit sneaky and try to get that out early. And Taryn doesn't have any way to get over here just yet. Um, looks like Scan made a small mistake. Okay, no, he did not. He has the SCVs mining now. Up here, we've got the depot. We've got an academy. And the command center is going to finish. So the game's quieted down quite a bit. So um, the command center is done. We've got SCVs already mining over here now. Terran doesn't want to move out. So he's going to just be staying back for a little bit. And the layer has started. So the layer's delayed for sure, but I think this is really Xiao Xia trying to figure out, like, okay, how do I get out of this pickle right now? What, what can I do to improve my situation, even if just a little bit? And so it's a risky way to play, but, you know, this is... StarCraft, a lot of times, is a game of calculated risk. I think it's why we saw so many good StarCraft players become good poker players, is they kind of were able to evaluate odds um, and know how to play you know, certain poker hands very well uh, and when to fold and, and do all that kind of stuff. So we don't know if Terran's going to find out about this base in time or not. There's a lot of other bases that you could also take and hide. And so he scans the natural. Now this is going to prompt the Zerg to throw down some sunks. There are Lings that can counterattack here. We may see some sunken colonies placed over here. And because he's hiding the base, he's also going to hide the tech. So, I mean, this is a, a massive Achilles heel <laughs> in this game, if it becomes a factor. We also had an Evo Chamber here. That might look confusing, but it it takes a, a while um, to kill the Evo, and, and, and it kind of messes with the pathing of the Marines. How many months, typically, until the next ESL? Well, there's two a year. And each ASL takes about two months and a week to do. So we just finished the uh, ASL finals this week, chat. So uh, it'll be a little bit of downtime. That's why you got to watch these casts on YouTube. Now, back at home, we have the hive immediately being made. Uh... Oh, my God. I'm so bad. I don't know where the scan went, guys. I'm, like, trying to check. <laughs> I suck at this game. It's so hard. I can see why people have professional observers, by the way, after doing a couple of these. It's so tricky. Um, but yeah, we don't know if this has been scanned yet or not by scan. So the hive is coming. Now, I wonder if you could try to, like, push this with guardians or something. Maybe not. Maybe that's, you know, I, a lot of times I'm always thinking, like, oh, this is the time he goes guardians. But um, just something to put out there. So there's more mutas uh, about to hatch. And Scan is going to be moving out now. He needs to try to put some pressure on. And he scans the main. Okay. So he sees there's a hive. So obviously you know the spire's got to be somewhere. And you also know the queen's nest has to be somewhere because he wouldn't be able to make a hive without a queen's nest. And Xiao Xia has got some pretty well-placed overlords to kind of just monitor movement out on the map. Uh, Xiao Xia is going to be able to take out a medic. That's always a nice catch. Even getting these marines and the fire bet back here is pretty handy. And Scan's got to be careful. Um, yeah, he takes those marines out. Even getting the bunker would actually be pretty nice. He can't get too much deeper in there than that. Um... With the hive done, what do we got? Oh, we're going to get the greater spire. Okay, I'm finally right about this for once. The number of times I cast this with our toes is that I'm like, maybe you should go guardians. And it's like, I'm never right. That's always the scrub move. Not today. Well, maybe maybe if he wins, it's, it's going to work. Okay, so we've got hydras in pretty high numbers. And he's going to get Hydra speed. So this is going to be... Oh, this is so cool. This is going to be a Guardian Hydra push. So you could scan this and be like, oh, well, there's going to be lurkers on the map. I better watch out for that. And from the Terran's perspective, I mean, I see the science facility here. The, the science vessels don't help that much against this co uh, composition because the damage comes out really fast. Lurkers, you can kind of chew away at the, 
the number of lurkers over time. Okay, so we've got how many? Six guardians. Is he going to get drop? Doesn't look like it. So, to be honest with you guys, I don't know, you know, what um, Hydra Guardian combinations are like, other than it could do a lot of damage. So I would imagine one Guardian shot. I think two Guardian shots can kill a Marine, although I think armor does start to impact that. But just a couple of Hydras comboed in with the Guardians, it's tough, especially as we got Defilers coming out now. So here we go. This is the moment where Scan realizes what kind of game he's in. Guardians are most like the carriers of Zerg in the sense that you're kind of you're trying to spring them on your opponent a lot of times. And so he's already chasing this out. I mean, this is pretty scary. The Hydras are on the move. I don't get to cast many games where we get this kind of a composition. And Terran's just like running all the way down here. I don't know how far the Guardians and the Hydras want to go. And two Wraiths are coming out. This is getting kind of crazy. So it's double Wraith play. I don't know if uh, Cloak just finished or not, by the way. But, you know, with the Hydras, I mean, the, that Wraiths are not going to be good versus that. And I think Terran has the right idea. Terran basically just stays back and says, no, I'm not even going to try to engage with you right now. You know, Guardians are extremely slow units. Sorry, my hand just slipped off the mouse pad there. Um, so he's got the Wraiths up here, but again, Hydras with cover. Here we go. Uh, there's nothing that the Wraiths can actually do, but the infantry is going to try to come forward anyways. The Wraiths are going to be taken out. No, they're not, actually. He backs up, trying to use the Guardians to maybe soak a little bit of damage so the Hydras can get some cover, but uh, it just seems like Scan is going to have too much. And, I mean, I don't know if there's a plan B from here, honestly, guys. Oh, my God. And there's all these Overlords here, too. I didn't even really appreciate how many are actually here that can be killed. And with the Wraith here, you can see onto the high ground. I think he's going to supply block Zerg if he can get these next four. Some of these Marines are attacking this extractor. So the Wraith is killed off. Dark Swarm comes down here. Since there's Lings in here, you can't run in and try to share the space. And... I'm a little bit worried. I mean, uh, you know, for the Zerg here, the Terran's going to expand again down here at the bottom. I, I, you know, again, this is not a game where you have like, you know, speedlings and mutas anymore running around like where you can hit this. This is probably just not going to be spotted for a while. And, you know, we, we, we do see the Lurker switch. It's never too late to try to go into standard play. Oh, my God. He just barely gets that off. That's crazy. But, I mean, there's so much over here. And again, he's already going to be able to deny mining from this base up here. Looks like there's a little bit of miscontrol here. I don't know how all these Marines are over on this side right now. And another Dark Swarm comes down. Meanwhile, we've got... I'm sorry, I, I think this is supposed to look like a drop. I'm not sure what the story is. Maybe he thought he could make the Zerg go back. Another drop, an actual drop, guys. Uh, over here at this base. Now, keep in mind how much important tech is here. I mean, we've got the Defiler Mound. He could get the Spire right after this. Zerg can't get back here very easily. So the Defiler Mound goes down. He's going to go for the Hatchery. I thought he might go for the Spire, but I guess, um, you know, Scan knows better than me. And now we're going to see a big push in here. I just don't know that uh, Chaoxia is actually going to be ready for this. I mean, oh, ho, ho, dude. He just completely overpowers him here. And this base is going to go down. GG. Kind of a crazy game there. I don't normally get to cast Guardian Hydra. Uh, the thing is, I'm not sure if that would have worked even if Wraiths weren't made. It, it's, it's kind of a weird composition. I think the idea is you hope the Terran attacks in earlier and you kind of spring that on him. But with the size of that, uh, the whole middle of the map, there's just so many places to run to. And there's no real avenue for the Hydras and Guardians to actually push into the top right. Honestly, it almost seems like that entire game just goes back to uh, the bunker rush at the start and the number of drones that were killed. And I think that kind of forced our Zerg player uh, into a position where he's going to try something weird to, to, to play a game that would probably be unwinnable uh, if it was a standard game. Uh, again, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment. Uh, you can get cool shirts like this one at tastelessthreads.com.
Uh, and I hope you have an amazing day, whatever you got planned for. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye.